Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and today I have the pleasure of making the acquaintance of and the pleasure of sharing with you, Dr. Fred Blum. Dr. Blum, Dr. Fred, Frederick. Fred. <laughs> Fred. <laughs> Fred helps his clients from world famous athletes to executives and small business owners find peace and clarity while still creating powerful results in the world. His work is very deep, designed to cut through the BS, the bullshit, to reveal your most essential self. He offers personal and group coaching, which we'll get to talk about, and bespoke private retreats, which I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna ask specifically about that later. But Fred, Dr. Blum, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Thanks, Kevin. Good to be here. Let's let's go back to your beginning, not your beginning, beginning. We don't have to go back to like the birth, but how <laughs> how did you, and I, I sort of like to tongue in cheek ask it this way sometimes, how did you, how'd you get your superpowers? What's your superhero origin story as a coach? I find that that's yeah. always very fascinating, like how a, a key mentor at the right moment with the right words that sort of sparked your realization or coaching maybe something you've been doing all your life and then you realized oh You're right, I right. have a word for this now so yeah what was it like for you well I I mean when you say mentors boy I have been so blessed so many amazing people have like been in my life in one way or another but more to the point so I was a holistic chiropractor for mm -hmm. about 25 years and I did some of you guys may be familiar with this a, a particular type of chiropractic called network spinal analysis which is um, very gentle, first of all. So it's like light touch. There's no twisting and popping. And it's really transformational work. It's not work designed to fix your back pain. It's work designed to uh, remove deep stress that gets held in the nervous system. And then in, in essence, to upgrade the nervous system, to make it more responsive to, to our environment. And, and in essence, to allow us to make better choices and to respond more creatively to our environment. It's a wonderful work. Um, created by a just absolute um, genius, visionary genius named Dr. Donnie Epstein. Um, he just wrote a new book called uh, The Seeker's Code, which I recommend. And um, and so I did that work and worked very closely with Donnie, spent thousands of hours training in that work over the years. And one of the things that it did for me is it made me, because it's really what I call subtle energy work, mm -hmm. you know? So it trains the, the practitioners to become very sensitive to energy, to fluctuations in energy. And energy is, I mean, that's a very broad topic, of course. Um, yeah. And it's not meant to be like a woo-woo kind of thing. It's just even like, you know, across a thousand miles, it doesn't matter. I'm on a Zoom call and a client might be talking about anything. They could be saying, blah, 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 my mother, blah, blah, blah. Right. And what I may notice in that moment is when they say whatever that phrase is, it doesn't have to be their mother, um, mm -hmm. that something in them, there's like a contraction that energetically I can notice, even though we're not in the same room or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And what I've come to recognize is that that contraction, which many people think it's a problem. Oh, that's a that's where you're blocked or stuck. We have to find a way to break through or remove that obstacle. I think of it a little differently. I actually think intrinsic, like embedded in that particular energy or frequency, the way it shows up in your body. I don't know if this is technically accurate, but I say it contains the codes that bring you one step closer to freedom. Huh. And so the question then becomes, how do we download those codes? How do we access those codes? And my answer is by meeting the experience, meeting it exactly as it is, not trying to fix it or change it. We And this is tricky. Dropping the agenda is hard, but this is what mm. coaching does, is we help people to, to just get present with what's happening in the moment. Mm. And when you meet your experience in this way, it becomes, I say it becomes like a doorway. It allows us to step through that experience and catch a glimpse of what I call the true self. And that's mm. a whole other, you know, rabbit hole we could go down, but, you know, what that means, what the true self is, what the ego is, and that becomes kind of one of the key principles in the work that I do. I, I love that, that, that impression that I get is almost, I can almost feel the, the vision in my head of that, that sort of quote unquote block or obstacle or trauma or whatever it is, not as obstacle, but as gateway. Right. And yeah. you, you kind of feel it. And honestly, like when you were talking about um, not fixing it, I can, mm -hmm. for whatever reason in my head, the, the word tune came tune? into mind. 
tuning up, almost like yeah. whether you tune, whether you tune an engine or an instrument, where right. it's like you're not adding strings. That's a great or, analogy. Let me steal but that. like a little bit of tuning, and you yeah. can learn to not only play your own music but harmonize with others as well. And really that's, well, yeah. excellent point. Yeah, because the, when the more we're stuck, when we see the obstacles and problems, um, then it 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 just creates a very different relationship to our experience. Yeah. Then if we trust, like, I mean, I have, you know, a belief that life always has our back, that it's not, we're not in like opposition to life. Now, it doesn't mean we always like what we see, but I suggest that in the way in which life has our back is that it's always kind of guiding us towards our own awakening. And so yeah. what we experience in this moment is life's way of saying, pay attention to this right here. Okay. It's not saying if you could just ignore this long enough, the good stuff will happen. Or if you could just get rid of this experience, good things will happen. It's saying this is the vast wisdom of life, however life exists. Because I mean, to me, you know, it's a miracle, mathematically impossible that we're even sitting here having this conversation, you know? Mm -hmm. And so whatever the, whatever the forces are that allow that to happen, that's the force that I want to align with. You here. here. Okay. <laughs> I both I both want to end the conversation there and also have like three more hours of conversation. Okay. Um, but but yeah, let's do let's, let's not let's not go three hours, but let's keep going. Let's um, keep going. Yeah. One thing that I as you were speaking that I was really drawn to is the idea that um like for example, like just basic pain, how you experience pain in your body mm -hmm. and how that's mm -hmm. not not an obstacle, it's not something to be treated directly, it's an indication for attention. It's yes. like how that hurts, huh? And I should move my senses to it. I should maybe figure out why. Now, obviously, yes. age, some, you know, I'm like in my mid 40s now, and, you know, sometimes things just ache and that's the way that it goes. Mm -hmm. But also, that's a call for attention too, because it's like, well, maybe I've been, you know, and this is just a, off the top of my head, like sort of random example. Maybe I've just been walking a little bit weird for too long, or I had like a bad pair of shoes. Right. That I didn't right. realize were a bad pair of shoes. And now I kind of have this chronic hip thing where it's, and he's like, you can, you can trace this kind of stuff around. You can figure out by applying your attention and with a little help from a coach, especially mm -hmm. why things are the way they are and then how you can move forward. Not rather than try to like fix a thing or just to like turn the volume down on the pain, the pain has a message for you. The obstacle has a message for you. Yeah. And this gets into, again, this idea of ego versus true self, because yeah. the ego, I mean, I could talk a lot about the ego and what it is. In essence, a very quick, simple definition of the ego is the identity that we create around two out of fear and insecurity, hmm. you know, so there's no ego that's foundation is love. Uh, if you scratch beneath this, the ego, we are love. That's who we are. Actually, this gets more into the idea of the true self. But the ego is because around two, this is when we first become self-conscious. Before two, where there's no you, there's no Fred, there's no Kevin, there's just experience happening, but no one really acknowledging that experience. You don't think I'm hot, I'm cold, I'm hungry. We just experience it directly. You don't think this is me and this is my mom because there's mm. no you yet. Right? Yeah. And so yeah. somewhere around two, the brain circuitry keeps evolving and we suddenly it's like, I must be the Kevin everyone's been talking about, you know? <laughs> and um, Now that's a beautiful thing. But yeah. at the same time, we're still so connected to the innocence and the purity. I believe this again, it's my story that that we, you know, unconsciously, because the two-year-old is still operating almost entirely from the unconscious mind. Mm -hmm. um, we look around the world and the world does not match our inner experience. It seems by comparison, very harsh, very intense. Yeah. And so we create a buffer between us and the world, mm -hmm. which is this ego, this identity. And intrinsic somehow in that identity is that there's something wrong with me. Like I don't fit in with this world. That So every ego has at its core, I'm broken. I'm mm. not worthy. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. Whatever it may be, everyone's got some version of that story. Yeah. And the extent to which we identify as this ego, which most people do, uh, we live a life trying to escape the fundamental pain of the ego of not feeling worthy. So we build a bunch of layers on top of that. 
<laughs> um, which could look like anything then. Mm -hmm. And we're off to the races. And so then life becomes about, for many of us, accumulation, accumulating more stuff, more experiences, more whatever. And my clients, for example, are the ones that typically have achieved some degree of success in that hamster wheel, so to speak. And at <laughs> some point they say, I don't understand. I did everything I was supposed to do. I got all the stuff I thought I wanted. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. No. But why am I not happy? Why am I still waking up and like dreading the day or feeling worthless or whatever it may be? And my answer to that is that they're really just looking in the wrong direction. They've been looking out there for happiness and health and satisfaction instead of looking in here. And this is where the game gets really interesting is when you turn that lens around. And that, that, is a, that is an elegant and beautiful segue into, well, into my next question, which is just, okay. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about the nuts and bolts of your coaching. Okay. Um, I like to ask this kind of as a two-part question, because I feel like it kind of gets at the heart of whatever a coaching practice looks like. Mm -hmm. Who do you coach and how do you coach them? The who being who you might focus on, if there is indeed a focus or a demographic or an industry, or if it's very deliberately broad spectrum because it's a human focus. Yeah. Um, and then the how being like, obviously, we talked about uh, you doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching. You also have these these retreats, these bespoke retreats you talked mm -hmm. about. So yeah, who do you coach and how do you coach them? Well, so I, I, I the truth is I will work with anyone. So, I mean, I've worked with, you know, from stay-at-home moms to world-famous professional athletes. Um, and I say, like, if you read my LinkedIn bio, it talks about people like I was kind of describing that really strive for something in the world and then they come back and they're, they're looking for something more. And I do like working with those people hmm. because they're often on like this inflection point in their life where they really, really tested the world hmm. and it came up wanting, you know? It came up like I didn't get what I thought. And so they're at a point where they're really willing to do some deep work. Um, so I, I'm a big fan of that. However, <laughs> there are people willing to do deep work in all different walks of life. And so you could be any anybody. And as long as you say, I'm ready to do the work, um, I'm interested in, in having that conversation because really all I want to do um, during my day and throughout my life is have lots of awesome conversations with people, you know? And I figure if I have enough awesome conversations, whether I'm being paid for them or not, by the way, yeah. I figure my life is going to figure itself out, you know? Um, <laughs> and, and so who I work with, it could be anyone genuinely. Um, and and the, the demographic that I sort of say are successful people who are not fulfilled, stressed out, not performing as well as they like, um, you know, they're, they're, in other words, in some way, we might say we've, they've gone as far as they can with their ego. And now they're looking for some other fuel source, if you will, or source, mm. perhaps, is in general. Um, mm. So I think that's more answer the first question, right? Yeah, yeah, that covers okay. it. It's, it's what I suspected, where you definitely have have worked with a particular kind of person at mm -hmm. those inflection points. Because obviously, there's in the in those moments, there's just so much to borrow a term from, from energy science, potential energy ready to right. be turned into kinetic right. energy, you know? And that's just, it's such a powerful moment in people's lives that it makes it both, both easy and challenging to work with. And so there's, there's mm -hmm. a natural draw to that. But like you, like you said, like it's everyone, stay at home parents, all the way up to world-class highest level performers. That's that there's, right. there's no one who can't benefit from this. No one who doesn't right. need this at some point. Yeah. And need even is, I mean, that's, yeah. We could make the argument for need, but really it's a, it's a choice. Um, I tend, well, so, so I tend not to work with people that are operating with what I would say below the line. So if you are consumed with anxiety or so depressed that you can't get out of bed, I have nothing but compassion for these people, but probably there's another pathway. They, they need to get to the point where they're at at least a certain level of functionality. Yeah. Um, because that's just where my work begins. My work begins from what I call a functional ego up from there. Yeah, you wouldn't give you wouldn't give that two year old a steak. Their body's oh, yeah. not ready to digest it yet. Right, right. So two year olds <laughs> don't work with a lot of two year olds. Yeah. 
And then how do you, I mean, obviously you have a, a broad spectrum of, of coaching modalities, your approach, but mm -hmm. basically what do you like, talk a little bit about your one-on-one -on -one and your group coaching. Is it, is the group coaching sort of a, a mastermind format or is it just sort of like teams and organizations? How does, how does that work for you? The group coaching, um, I have two different groups and I'm actually forming them now as we speak. I'm reigniting them after a while of not being doing that. So I'm, I'm creating a large group, which may reach 50, 75 people, whatever, it's fine. And it's going to be very inexpensive, uh, mm -hmm. like to the point where really anyone can do it. Um, mm -hmm. And the intention for that is, um, I have a format, I don't have it in front of me, but there'll be some teaching, like every um, every meeting, and um, it'll, it'll be either weekly or every other week, there'll be like a, a teaching of a particular idea, topic, some principle, and then there'll be someone will have one or two people get on the hot seat, so to speak, and we'll give them, we we'll coach them directly and whatever they may want to discuss. And uh, there's one or two other elements. And then the last part, which I love, is the group energy part. I'm a big believer in the collective energy of a group. Um, uh, I joke sometimes, I say, I'm a Jewish kid from Long Island who loves to quote Jesus. And <laughs> because I think Jesus said a lot of things that point directly to what we're talking about here, which is who are we really? What is your your essence as a human being? And, you know, I, I believe that it's love. And and one of the things that Jesus said is when two or more gather in my name, mm -hmm. there shall I be, right? Or some version of that. And to me, that's about when two or more gather. Okay, here we are. In my name to me doesn't mean necessarily in like literally invoking Jesus's name, but perhaps what he came to teach or share with us. So when we come together to explore what is really the nature of being human, what is the nature of love? Um, and we come together, there shall I be, I think means that that energy is somehow amplified. Hmm. And I think that it's actually amplified exponentially somehow. So when you put 50 people together and we each kind of get present to what it is that we want to create in the world. I'm, a, I'm big on this idea of creation. So when mm -hmm. we get to this place of what we might call true self, then that, that allows us to be in a point of being a creator where we can, without the ego, which is always trying to prove itself or become worthy or something, when that's out of the way, now we create just for the joy of creating. You know, and so it's a very powerful place to come from. And when you put a group of people together and we all begin, first, we do the work to get connected to who we are, mm -hmm. to self, which can happen relatively quickly. There's practices that I've created to give us what's called a glimpse of that Ooh. peace, clarity, freedom of who we really are. We haven't really talked about that much yet. Um, but from that place, then we'll focus on what we want, but in a way that creates that additive, that group energy. And I believe that that energy then becomes available to all of us. It empowers our creations. It empowers our intention. So that's the intention with the, with the large group. The small group, which is more like an inner circle sort of thing, which might be six or eight of us, hmm. is more coaching oriented. So it's more, it's like one-on-one, -on -one, but more in a group format, which hmm. has advantages because you have that feedback from other people. It's also going to be more cost effective for some people. And then there's the one-on-one, -on -one, which is just me and you in a room or on a Zoom call. Uh, and obviously that's the most personal, that's the most intensive version of that. Yeah, man, that's, I'm, I'm going to have to have you back on because I feel like we're just, as, as I suspected, <laughs> we're just like tip of the iceberg, scratching the surface. Um, but Alex, honestly, it does provide an excellent tease. So before I let you go for okay. today, anyway, I'm just, I'm just, I'm going to conspire to have you back on and maybe we'll have, a, um, I'm in with that conspiracy. A few more of these sets. This is, this is great. Um, where can people, if they wanted to learn more about you, where can people best learn more about you, what you do, who you are, and where can people best connect with you online? If you have a preferred social media or wherever you want to direct people to, if they want to start a conversation like this. Yeah, I would say, you know, we were just talking about this earlier, of course, I like LinkedIn. Um, I'm, my website is currently in the process of being reconstructed. And so there's not a website at the moment, but if you hook up with me on LinkedIn, it's just Dr. Fred Blum, uh, that's the easiest place for us to connect. Uh, and um, is, can I make an offer? Oh, Here? absolutely. Okay. Um, and, and this is really uh, what I found is the simplest way for me to kind of 
like determine for both me and a, and a potential client to determine if we're a good fit for each other. And for that, I say, let's just have a coaching conversation. So um, I'm more than happy to take an hour or 90 minutes and we're going to sit down and we're going to do the work. This I want to be want to be really clear about this. This is not a um, a cleverly disguised sales pitch. <laughs> I'm not going to try and convince you to work with me at the end of an hour or so. We're going to know if there's a next step for us to take. So mm. that's my invitation. Um, reach out to me through LinkedIn. That's the simplest way. Um, and uh, if, if you'd like to do that, I'm more than happy to schedule some time with you. And of course, there's no charge for that that session. It's just an opportunity. Like I said, awesome conversations, right? I want to just have lots of awesome conversations with people. And uh, and some of those folks, if you want to go deeper, you know, I'd be thrilled to have you. Oof. Man, that's a, now that's a compelling offer. That's I'll make sure to highlight that in the show notes and okay, and thanks. doubly direct people towards your LinkedIn so they could reach out if they want to take advantage of that or they just want to like learn more or if they're ready to dive all the way in. <laughs> <laughs> I love your embrace of fit. That's something I find to be to be common amongst all good coaches is mm -hmm. their one of their primary concerns early on is making sure it's like I I understand that we might not be a good fit but I want to take the time to evaluate that. And if we're not, I might know someone who would be a better fit for you. I almost you certainly do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's that's one of the things I love about the 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 coaching wave that has been growing is there's there's such a collegiality. A yeah. we're here mm -hmm. to try to help and fit is crucial. And I just I I appreciate your emphasis on that. Thanks. <laughs> And yeah, shoot, thank you for spending so much time with me today. I mean, it was, it's oh, barely pleasure. been like 25 minutes, but I, I yeah. could have kept you Lies. for 25 hours. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> but next time we'll have to dive into some into some other, other interesting things. But in the meantime, for the audience, you know what to do next. Go, at the very least, find out more. Go to LinkedIn. There will be a website again eventually. There was a website mm -hmm. before and there shall be again. There shall. <laughs> and yeah. Thank you, Fred, so much for spending some time with me today. I really, My really pleasure. Do. Thank you for having me, Kevin. I really yeah. do appreciate the time. And to the audience, hey, you know what to do next. We'll talk to you again here on the podcast very soon. Okay, take care.